Welcome back to Dragon Army Books. My name is Dustin and this is our July wrap up video where I talk about briefly the books that I read in the month of July 2021, the year of our Lord. It was an eh reading month for me and I'm putting out this video a week or two into the month of August. So things are even late. I apologize for that, but get over it. I'm just kidding. You don't have to get over it. I need to get over it. I, I posted a whole video kind of talking about what my problem is right now. You can click the link in the annotation to hear more about my journey. But for this video, I want to share with you the books, comics, novellas, graphic novels, audiobooks, and everything in between that I read this month. So you can see all of the books around me now. That's magic. And then you can also see the uh, timestamps down in the notes below and click to any book that you might be interested in or just watch the whole thing, you darling angel. All right, are you ready to hear this? My avatar buzz is simmering down, finally. It was months and months long. And don't get me wrong, I still love Avatar The Last Airbender. I still like The Legend of Korra, but I've finished all of the current graphic novels, at least for Avatar. I've still got a little bit more to go with Korra. And I've started even the prequel novels. Let's get straight into it. I had a little bit more of cleanup early in the month of July, starting with North and South, which was the last graphic novel put out by the team of Yang and Guri Hiru, which are uh, the, like the, the storyteller as well as the illustrator team duo uh, and I mean the work that they have done on the majority of these graphic novels has been absolutely excellent and that continues here with North and South. Each of the graphic novels in the Avatar universe here have highlighted a character or two in each of the graphic novels but we hadn't yet spent time at least kind of dedicated time and focus on Sokka and Katara, the brother and sister duo. So we actually get that here in North and South. And so we go back to the Southern Water Tribe. I wanted to make sure that I was getting that right. It's the South, not the North. And um, it, it, we're still dealing with what the series a lot has dealt with, especially with Korra, um, as we're nearing there on the timeline here in the story, where we're dealing with the issues of like modernity, like moving into to a new era without losing our identity and Katara is really wrapped up into that like wanting to preserve and keep what is there especially because that's her family that's her memories with her mom so the story is as compelling as ever as avatar as ever I, I do think there were a few faltering decisions made in some of the climactic moments but still graphic like the illustrations the the coloring all of that was exceptional the story is just so much fun it really truly does feel like avatar if you're a big avatar fan and haven't read these core graphic novels you certainly need to and then we move to the sixth core graphic novel in the Avatar series. And I keep saying core because there are a few smaller comics and graphic novels, but there's some, some chunky boys. Uh, and this is one of them. It's called Imbalance. It's not Avatar The Last Airbender Imbalance. It's just Imbalance. And it's a new team. It's not Yang and Guri, Guri Hiru. It is now, uh, who is it? Hicks and Wartman, um, a, a new uh, storyteller, a new illustrator, and I had low expectations and I was pleasantly surprised. It was actually good. The storytelling was still faithful to Avatar. The illustrations were different and less than what Guri Hiru can do, in my opinion, but still, they are, they're remarkably done. And once you kind of wean yourself off of what is the beauty of Guri Hiru, you, I at least, started to really like what, um, what Wortman was doing here with the illustrations. All the more foundations are being laid for what will come in The Legend of Korra. In fact, the little bustling and growing town that the, the team Avatar spends the majority of the time in, in this graphic novel, becomes a, um, a, a, a very important city in a future, in a future iteration, in a future timeline. And so um, I, I just... It's, it's really cool. This Avatar world is exceptional. And I've said it before. I don't know if I've said it in a video or just on social media. But the world of Avatar is certainly in my top three. If not now, my favorite fantasy universe. One of my favorite fantasy universes of all time. Just because so much love, attention to detail, creativity. 
It's just a beautiful place to be. Imbalance wasn't as great as some of the other graphic novels before, but it was better than at least one, if not two. So it's, it's great. And I hope that they continue to do more in the future. And then the stories that helped wean me off of Avatar. I finished watching The Legend of Korra, all of the seasons, and did it in a record amount of time for me. Uh, and then I wanted to pick up on the graphic novels right away. There are a few, and they're bad. The first is actually just a small little story. It is in a compilation. The Legend of Korra Friends for Life is what the story is called, but it was also with a story uh, from How to Train Your Dragons just one dragon and plant versus zombies, uh, which I had only seen the first movie in how to train your dragon adorable. Like I'd love to watch more and then plants versus zombies. Isn't that a phone game? Friends for life is a cute story. It's a short story, but it's just Korra meeting Naga for the very first time. So, ah, it's adorable. The artwork is cute, um, but it's, you know, it's just what it is. It's fine. And then next I read the legend of Korra turf wars, which is kind of, I guess, a, a one of the core graphic novels, but of The Legend of Korra, and it's just not. It's just not good. Like, the, the I, it's astonishing to me to know that the creators are still behind it. I really don't know how much influence they are having over it. Actually, no, I do, because I think that this story was actually written by the series co-creator, Michael DiMartino, which is unfortunate because it doesn't feel like Avatar, the voices of the characters don't sound like Avatar, and the adventure doesn't feel Avatar. But maybe I'm just missing it, I don't know, I'm sure there are a lot of fans of this because it continues to explore Korra, it continues to explore Asami, it continues to explore their relationship, and the evolving world after the like traumatic events in the conclusion of The Legend of Korra. But when I read graphic novels, I read them for the story and I read them for the illustrations. And both of those pale in comparison here to the previous graphic novels in the Avatar universe. So there's one more of these to read and I haven't done it yet and it is not anywhere up near the top of my TBR. Up next is Suki Alone. It's a story about Suki being alone. It is a snapshot of a moment in the original series where Suki was uh, imprisoned in the Fire Nation. I, I believe this is in the last season uh, at Boiling Rock. I believe that's the fortress, the uh, prison that she was in. And it's some moments of her time in the prison trying to like kind of stir up a rebellion. And then it's flashbacks to when she was leaving her island for the first time. So, um, it, it's it's good. It's interesting. It's short. The illustrations are great. I believe that this is Faith Aaron Hicks again and and Wartman. I believe it's the same crew. It is. I just checked. It's the same duo from the from Imbalance and, and the new series. So I, I like what they're doing. It's a good story. It doesn't add anything exceptional, but it's cute and it's fun and it's a quick read. So I, I would say if you're into Avatar, then you definitely want to read about Suki being alone. It's got a few of those feel good moments. And then one more, and then I'll stop talking about Avatar, I swear. Although there is going to be a video in the nearish future where I talk kind of just extensively and collectively about all of the Avatar books and graphic novels. I, I've done two videos, one on Avatar The Last Airbender and one on The Legend of Korra, and then I want to do a final one on all of the reading material for the, the series. So plan for that on a future date. But one more here, it is The Rise of Kiyoshi. It's actually, uh, it's just two books, a duology, right now. I think it's just going to be two, which is kind of cool. Uh, and it's the Kiyoshi novels. Yeah, we're going back in time to a previous iteration of the Avatar, and it's kind of really cool. Kyoshi was always an interesting avatar to me, coming from the Earth Kingdom, all painted up, the Kyoshi warriors at a later time, but I, I didn't know she was going to be this cool. I said it in my written review on Goodread, but I came into this novel thinking it was good, because this is an actual novel, it's not a graphic novel, it's an actual novel, a young adult novel, that I thought was going to be another Nickelodeon entry, right? Another cute story in the Avatar universe. Instead, I got Be Gay, Do Crime. Man, this is not kid Nickelodeon anymore, it is an elevated sense of, of like on, on a relational level, on the violence, on the deaths. So it's what I've been looking for. The writing is okay. The story gets a little monotonous uh, and, and, and drags a little bit later on, but it's, it's, I'm, 
I like it. I like it. And so I'm looking forward to reading The Rise of Kyoshi, which is when she actually steps. Oh, wait, no, this was The Rise of Kyoshi. I'm looking forward to reading The Shadow of Kyoshi, which is the, the second book where hopefully she eventually or she like a actually becomes Avatar Kyoshi because she in, in this first book is really like the precursor to some of those moments. So really looking forward to reading more in, in the series. Okay, goodness, I'm done with Avatar talking about it for now. I've only got two other books to, to talk about. One is, yes, The Sword of Kaigen. M.L. Wang's self-published fantasy novel, dang it, that is Avatar for adults. I know I said that I was going to stop talking about Avatar, but then it's not my fault that the Sword of Kaigen is really that. I mean, they are bending elements. In fact, our, our protagonist and their story is centered around these waterbenders. They don't call them it bending, but they are controlling water and ice molecules, and they are even bending blood. Like, that is a key part of the story as well. There's a lot here. I'm going to do a full review on it, so I'm just kind of going to go through it very quickly here. But man, the world building, the characters, uh, like uh, you have expectations and they are superseded. Man, they, they are not what you expected. The, the plot here actually goes in directions that... And with a timing that feels super unnatural. Some readers will really like that. And some will be like, man, that's a downside. And so many people fawn over this book. And I completely understand why I enjoyed it. But it didn't, it wasn't even a five star for me. I think it was four stars, which is a really good book for me. But it, it didn't make it into my like upper echelon of the most elite books that I've ever read. Although, hey, it's good. And then, for those of you that remember, I am rereading the whole Ender Saga right now. So I did the whole first Formic War trilogy, and I've read now the first two books that are released in the second Formic War trilogy. I already did a full video review on the, these two books, so you can click the link in the annotation. But they are entitled The Swarm and The Hive. The two books that are currently released in this second series, and it really is just the fourth and fifth installment in the formic wars because they're just a continuation we do get a few new characters introduced but really we're still following a lot of the same and some of my same complaints from the first formic wars carry over to the second formic war so that like we're talking about um it, it feels like orson scott card's ideas but aaron johnston's uh, like execution and his execution isn't as good as what Orson Scott Card could do. These characters just kind of fulfill their roles, but there's no depth there. However, I do feel like some things have been learned from the first trilogy that are being uh, used here in the second series to greater effect. So I am enjoying this second series more than the first Formic War, but there's still a lot, uh, you know, a lot that could have been done to make this series better than what it actually is. And to make a long video even longer, I am going to attach some book mail openings to the end of this video. I think this is kind of where it makes most sense in my current kind of video structure and lineup is to include some book mail at the end of my wrap ups. You know, the book mail that I opened in the month of July that I'm talking about. So anyways, here are a few of the books that I received from publishers and from viewers in the last few weeks. I got a package in the mail and um, so I I almost opened it and then I was like wait I've got a booktube channel I've got to open it on film so that just in case it's book book mail oh, come on uh, just be, just in case it's book mail then I need to get this on camera and then thank whoever sent it to me so this is me opening the package. This is me reaching inside. And this is me pulling out some books. I haven't even looked yet. There's more. Come on. Come on. Okay. Let's go through these and see what they are. Okay. Someone knows that I like video games because this is Console Wars. Sega, Nintendo, and the Battle that Defined a Generation by Blake J. Harris. Not my typical fantasy sci-fi flair. It's a picture book. Anyways, um, interesting, cool. And uh, then we've got Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I've read, what have I read from this guy? He's also the author of, what are you the author of, bro? I don't know what you're the author of, but I've read it before. 
And then Pendragon uh, by D. This one's all wrapped up, all fancy like. Pendragon. Do you see it in there? Um, this is a like a middle grade young adult fantasy series. Pendragon, book one, The Merchant of Death. Dustin, sorry this book took so long to get to you. Amazon delivered this to the wrong address twice. I've included three books for you. And then he wrote about Pendragon, uh, saying it's definitely middle grade, y, y, middle grade YA book, a little younger than what you tend to read. However, this was one of my favorite series as a kid. Um, wrote some more. And then Dark Matter, not sure if you've gotten around to this yet. I didn't see a review on your channel, and I know back in Feb 2020 you revealed, re reviewed Recursion. You said you hadn't read it yet. Uh, I still haven't read it. So um, it was a gift given to you by a former manager. So when you're done with it, re-gift it to someone else. That's super cool. And then, come on, my fingers aren't working. And then Console Wars, definitely not the usual science fiction fantasy fair that you talk about on your channel, but as I started watching, I knew you. Ha I knew I had to send this your way. Um, I'm not usually a nonfiction guy, but this is by far one of the best and most inspiring stories I've ever read. Awesome, love it, love it, love it. Okay, there's a lot more in here, but this is from Jake. Jake, thank you. These, this is my first, this is my second book mail from friends and and viewers. So thank you. Super, super cool. I can't wait to get to all of these. All right. I cannot even begin to tell you how excited I am to open this package because I believe that I know what it is. Bad shadow on my face. What if I do that? Who wears their hat like that? Um, I'm going to open this package. This, if, if this is what I think that it is, it is a conclusion to a series and it is an ARC. I've got it in advance. A book that comes out in November. So this is like an early advance. And I doubt it's going out to too many people because it's the conclusion of a series that I've read the first three books to. This would be the fourth book in the series. Address. It is. It's the fourth and final book in the Babel, the Books of Babel series. It is The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. Available November 2021, not for sale. That, this is just so much fun. This is so much fun. This is, this, this is, this reminds me why I make videos all the time about book content. Because um, to be able to get a book from an author that I love and revere of a series that I love and respect and am completely engaged in, um, and to be able to get this fourth and final book early, I, I'll have to figure out what I can say about it. But I'm certainly going to begin my reading experience tonight, and I expect a lot of emotions as I, as I do. Thanks, Orbit. I've got new book mail, so I'm going to open it up here on camera. I think I know what it is. It says it's from Hatchet Book Group, which it is what I thought it was. I didn't know that it would be coming from Hatchet Book Group. So this is this is an odd, odd one because this is kind of an ARC, but this book has been out for a while in the UK. It just hadn't come out in the States until just now. Um, so it's not really an advanced copy anymore. Ooh, it got kind of jacked up. Um, but this is the book. It is Shards of Earth by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I've never actually said it out loud. Um, and the reason why I said it's a little messed up, got a little bit bent in the, in the, uh, in the transit, but nothing's torn, nothing's ripped, nothing that can't be repaired. Love this. It's got a, um, I don't know, a tech, uh, not a textured, but like a mat, kind of real, maybe a little bit of a, it's got a feel there. Um, and it's a lot thicker than I thought it'd be. This is a, kind of one of my most anticipated sci-fi books of the year. And again, it's out now, so you can purchase it, you can order it, but I will be starting this soon. Um, first book that I've actually read by Adrian, haven't read some of his other key sci-fi ones, so I'm looking forward to Shards of Earth. Thank you, Orbit.
A big sincere thank you to the publishers and to the viewers that are sending books. That's so cool. Never expected that. And I absolutely love it. Listen, I'm not going to stop you from sending me books. I don't have a PO box though. So if you're interested, you need to like actually personally message me. So you got to be actually interested to go and find my email address. And then I can hook you up with an address that you can mail those to. But I would love to, I, I, anytime that I get a book mail, it's like uh, it's Christmas and that's my favorite holiday. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and like this video, this long video. If you haven't yet, click subscribe, join the Dragon Army, and we'll see you in the next one.